Hello, everyone. My name is Dan Waters. I'm Director of Business Development for Samsung SDS America. Uh, a little bit, bit of background about myself. I uh, began my career working in uh, South and Central and North America. I designed the first cellular phone networks across the northern border of Mexico, uh, Chile, uh, Uruguay, Paraguay, uh, Nicaragua, Nicaragua, y uh, Honduras también. And uh, so now I'm uh, currently working here in Samsung, and I have a long history in artificial intelligence as well. I was director of business development for Siri, which was acquired by Apple. I actually introduced Siri to Apple. Uh, and uh, I worked for a company called Xnor.ai that was just recently acquired uh, by Apple as well. And so now I'm part of Samsung, and it's great to be with you today. So. I'm going to be talking about uh, trends in AI in medicine and healthcare. Uh, in particular, uh, I'd just like to start by saying I know some of the previous speakers have been talking about artificial intelligence and the prevalence of it. And probably about five years ago or so, you know, we were still in the phase of, uh, you know, research in artificial intelligence, trying to prove out that artificial intelligence was effective and could, could work uh, in business, in medicine. And today, the trend is really uh, around artificial intelligence is proven, it's working. And today, there are many com computer vision applications that have become quite popular in the medical imaging domain, uh, you know, for detecting and diagnosing diseases and MRI, CT, X-ray, ultrasound, uh, uh, images in 2D and 3D. And uh, patients, doctors, hospitals, and insurance companies are benefiting. Today, we're going to discuss the various challenges to developing and deploying AI models, and we're going to focus on the biggest challenge of all, which is really obtaining an accurately annotated data set. And how we're going to be annotating or talking about annotating a data set is around active learning, which is really reshaping machine learning field by reducing the amount of time, human effort and time needed to label images, and it's going to be disruptive in the field in the coming years. So what is artificial intelligence? I think we all have a pretty good idea. Basically, artificial intelligence is the emulation of human capability, either in sensing, uh, some perception, or even in the ability to complete a task, for example, for example like Siri, was all about uh, recognizing speech, uh, I should say, recognizing intent as well in terms of natural language processing and then delegating to a web service that could execute your task. And so uh, that's just one example. But, but really today, machine learning is about prediction. Uh, and that's not just today. That's, that's what machine learning is and deep learning. Uh, we use information uh, you have to generate information that you don't, right? So we infer based on... Uh, image uh, image information that's real image, for example, we infer what's in that image by using artificial intelligence. And so it's really about the probability of the outcome. It's about the probability that we're recognizing something, we're predicting that we're recognizing a dog or a cat or a person or a face, for example. And before we can do AI, we first must obtain a labeled data set, right? There are several steps as well, uh, once we have a labeled data set, and those involve feature engineering, training a model, selecting the model, training a model for a particular use case, optimizing the model for that use case, and then of course, running the model at inference. And, and what's interesting about that is that 80% of the work of the human effort in developing an AI model is really around uh, data acquisition, data preparation, and data labeling. Uh, that's a very interesting part of this. It's kind of the hurdle that we need to get over before we can start to, you know, train a model. So it's the time to train, not the time training. Um, talking about the time training, though, 80% of the time in developing a, an AI model is around the compute time of computers to process all that information, all that data, which is just growing exponentially today. And so the models are getting bigger as well. And so there's a huge compute cost and time that it takes to actually train each iteration of a model towards an optimal or an optimized model outcome. And so 
Let's talk for a moment about AI and healthcare and life sciences. And there are, you know, near-term and long-term, uh, you know, visions of AI and health. And a lot of it today, you know, some just some quick points are around diagnostics, drug discovery, drug development, and the healthcare workflow, which really kind of affects doctors and physicians and the staff that provide patient care. And if you look at this Deloitte and Touche uh, diagram on the right-hand side, you can see, of course, that it affects every element from research and development for finding new drugs, for example, doing a lot of st statistical machine learning and analysis there, to manufacturing, supply chain, uh, optimizing supply and demand, for example. And of course, even on the consumer side, uh, with a uh, uh, optimizing and understanding the omni-channel aspect of, hu of humans actually evaluating different medical solutions for themselves or finding the right doctor. All of those things use artificial intelligence today to help the consumer, to help the supply chain, the manufacturer, and researchers. When we look at drug discovery, you know, what we're trying to do is find the key of that particular drug to prevent it from entering your body and affecting your body. So we're trying to identify that. And what's interesting, you know, there's, there's a lot of research today, AI uh, assisted research, for example, drug, drug discovery uh, produces about a thousand papers, research papers a year. And the cost to produce, identify a drug and bring that drug to market is about 2.8 billion. And what we think at Samsung SDS is that we can reduce those costs and the time by about 70% using artificial intelligence and an active learning process to label data very efficiently and effectively to derive an accurate outcome. Um, in addition to that, you know, today there is precision medicine. So no longer is it using a particular drug to reduce inflammation and it's good for everybody. Now it's about understanding what are the individual characteristics in each of us that are, are uh, important in designing drugs for each one of us. So that's a major focus and artificial intelligence is helping in that regard too. In addition to that, I'm sure all of you know that we're wearing devices today. So my watch can pick up my uh, EKG of my heart to let me know that I might be in uh, a fib fibrillation, for example. Um, you know, I may have devices at home that help me to understand my health and the, the members of my family in, at my business at work. Uh, we have these devices and it's just going to continue to grow and we'll have more prevalence of these devices that help us in our daily life. It could be wearables on our personal area network, as I mentioned, and it could be your phone, for example, right? Your phone uh, can see you, can hear you, uh, can talk to you, can feel you, you can feel things, and it can tell you where you, are, where you are if you wanted to, for example. So AI is really in everyone's pocket today. And, you know, what's interesting is that when you're thinking about doctors, um, you know, in patient care, uh, about, on average, 40% of the doctor's time, physician's time, is actually spent doing administrative tasks that are not providing patient care, right? And, um, and so, you know, it's really only 30% roughly on average of the time that doctors have that they're actually able to spend on patient care because there's, there's a major obstacle in the back office tasks that doctors have to perform uh, in order to uh, manage uh, electronic medical health records, for example, uh, doing paperwork and doing reports rather than being bedside or being in front of a, a patient, helping them to diagnose and helping to provide patient care. And you can see from the cartoon that's on the screen that there are some physicians that are managed by the hospital to focus on choosing a process that may not be optimal for the patient. It may be simply to maximize profitability for a hospital. Whereas other doctors, other physicians just want to provide patient health care and focus on the right thing for their patient. So what is, you know, when we think about artificial intelligence, a key point here is that, uh, you know, in what I do whenever I encounter a problem, I like to automate, especially complex problems. But what AI is doing in healthcare, a lot of times in the back, back office is automation for the doctors. There's a lot of tasks that the doctors, the doctors are performing today that have nothing to do with patient care. And a lot of these things are 
typical, typical office work that any office worker would perform. And computers can do them faster, cheaper, and more accurately, right? Computers don't get tired, right? They, they uh, don't get weary by doing multiple repetitive tasks. And so those are great tasks for artificial intelligence to jump into and perform uh, to really improve uh, you know, patient care by removing mundane tasks for doctors to actually perform. So let's look at AI and diagnostics. What we've been working on at Samsung SDS America over the last two years uh, is diagnostics uh, across a, a spectrum of different use cases. One in particular, of course, is COVID that we've all been dealing with. Uh, the last couple of years, we developed an AI model that actually detects COVID, uh, COVID in a chest X-ray 4% more accurately than a rapid nose test and 1% more accurately than a PCR test. And we can do that in the time that it takes to take an X-ray, for example. You don't need to wait 15 minutes for, for the rapid nose test. You don't need to wait a day, two days, three days for the results to come back from a lab for the PCR test. It can be the same amount of time that it takes to actually take the X-ray. We can determine right away that there is, there is uh, COVID, for example, as opposed to pneumonia, or maybe this is a normal X-ray. And so we're doing the same thing. We're applying this technology uh, to determine the presence or non-presence of cancer in breast tissue. We're able to take breast tissue slices, put them under a microscope, take an image, and actually evaluate and analyze that image for whether or not that contains a pathology, for example. Uh, we're doing the same thing with CT scans to detect whether or not there is a brain tumor. And we're able to take uh, uh, colonoscopy videos and frame by frame determine the degree of which there may be cancer, for example, uh, in a patient. And so, you know, all of these things, um, you know, are very helpful to patients and we can do them very quickly. And by doing these things, we actually realized that we needed to develop a more uh, effective, efficient labeling process. And so we, we identified active learning. And so I'm gonna explain that in a little bit, but I wanna tell you why uh, active learning is so important. Uh, it's because the cost of labeling medical images is so high. The people that are labeling these images are physicians, uh, radiologists, pathologists, who uh, are very expensive for a hospital from a dollar per hour perspective. Uh, not only that, but the, the use cases that they're, they're requiring are really segmentation. They want to identify all the pixels very accurately within an image that identify a particular pathology. And so to do that, it takes about two to five minutes per image uh, and about, you know, between three and six people uh, to you know, to kind of check each other to make sure that they're doing it accurately to, to actually provide a segmentation label versus, you know, checking a label in a review process can be very quick. It could be, you know, uh, 10 to 20 seconds uh, with one or two people doing the work. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, the databases, data sets are actually increasing significantly. It's an exponential increase in the size of data sets and the size of models required to, to be trained. And so we look at most of the time between 100,000 and a million images per data set that we're actually handling. And so the cost of this in, man in manually labeling these databases could be around $12 million and take about 19 person years uh, versus through active learning, we can actually reduce that annotation cost down to about 1.35 million uh, and only two person years. And so how do we do that? is by this process of, of active, uh, active learning. And so what's interesting about our process in particular at Samsung is that we're actually applying a pre-process, an unsupervised process on the front end to identify those images that we should provide to humans to label first. So active learning is a, uh, a human in the loop process. Uh, and what we do is we, we, we take advantage of the fact that really only 10% of images in a data set contain all the information that you need to label all of the rest of the images automatically. And so what we try to do is we, we have a process 
that is very efficient and uses as little data as possible so that we can reduce the cost for humans to label that data. And how we determine those images that are uh, the, the most informative, have the most information gained, is we apply this unsupervised pre-process on the front end to identify those images that have the most contrast or lack of correlation. Of course, we then provide those images to the humans. We may take, for example, a data set, I should say a batch of maybe 1% of the images out of the total data set we've identified. These are the most informative in images. We provide them to the human labelers, which are doctors, and then they label them, provide them back to the system. Then we train a model on those images and then we run that, we apply those, that model to the rest of the images in the data set and label all of them. And then we go back through and we organize the data in terms of uncertainty. In other words, what, uh, you know, what images or labels is the system most confused about? And then we provide that next 1% of those images that the system is most confused about. We provide them to the human labelers, which are doctors, and then they label those images. And so we, we rinse and repeat this process uh, about several times, maybe three or four times, until we start to really climb the accuracy asymptote to a targeted accuracy that we desire. And so at that point, once we achieve that accuracy, uh, and by the way, we're able to do this in you know between three and 10% of the data, uh, then we provide the completely labeled data set back to the physicians to just review the images and we can highlight the images that the system is most confused about that the labelers can then go back through and just very quickly review and approve the the labels that have been applied and uh and so then we result in a, a 100 percent accurate data set for example so it's highly accurate uh and we're also doing this by by using uh auto machine automated machine learning automated deep learning for example and so we're able to apply uh, exploit rather uh, large GPU clusters to really speed the work. So this this work of labeling these data sets can be done very re realistic and, and fast time. And the success, the results that we've had, as I mentioned, uh, most of the time we are able to save up to 90% of the human effort. Uh, and we're able to, the blue line on top you'll see in this chart is the, is our, uh, our process of active learning uh, where we're identifying the most informative in images and providing them first. So order matters in this case. And so we're choosing those images to provide to humans to label and then provide back to the system in this, this con continuous improvement process, whereby we're able to achieve very accurately, very quickly, the accuracy, desired target accuracy, uh, much more quickly than what you'll see on the, the lower line there, the, the green line, which can take, you know, in, in some cases, up to 50% of images being labeled by humans. And so continue here. Uh, there's some considerations in deployment, of course. You know, we want to operationalize everything for doctors, keeping in mind, you know, their, uh, what their workflow is to diagnose, uh, you know, diseases. Um, we're taking a look at, of course, integrating artificial intelligence with, you know, EM EMR systems, uh, you know, and then, of course, uh, we're actually cognizant of the fact that we need to continuously improve these models. So there's a machine learning operations path here by which we need to capture more data, label, continuously label that data, and then retrain the models to make sure that they continue to be accurate. So that's a key component that uh, whereby active learning is important uh, to provide accurate labels so that, you, you know, it's garbage in, garbage out. And in this case, you want to make sure that you have the most accurate uh, informative labels for your, your training. And so what does the future look like? Uh, you know, the journey, you know, it's all about the journey, not the destination, because as I mentioned, we need to continuously improve these models. So it's continuously, you know, uh, acquiring data, preparing the data, labeling the data, modeling, evaluating, deploying, and then monitoring for ac accuracy. Uh, so that's just a continuous process. And, you know, today, uh, what we do is, you know, we wait until someone gets sick and then we all rush to solve the problem, right? And so, uh, and the doctors focus on, you know, diagnoses, you know, and medicines and, uh, you know, AI helps doctors to identify what the right medicines are for people. In the future, of course, healthcare is gonna be more 
preventative, more proactive about maintaining a healthy status quo. And so it's about, you know, self-responsibility, you know, using sensors on your, your house, on yourself, you know, your diet, your exercise, your lifestyle to prevent these that we know, you know, a good exercise and healthy eating actually prevents uh, disease. And it's about, like I said, these wearables that help us bridge the gap uh, that can tell us, uh, you know, information about ourselves that we wouldn't otherwise know. And so the last real takeaway here is that, you know, healthcare today is really the upcoming AI frontier. You know, it's, it's got the largest pain point, the largest cost for the human uh, humans in the loop. Uh, and data annotation is the real central obstacle. And for that, that's why we've developed this, uh, what we call auto-label solution using active learning. Uh, and we believe that this is, you know, AI will enable by using and labeling data more accurately, more quickly, that AI will enable a proactive, uh, proactive healthcare experience for all of us to remain healthier. And so with that, uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, I appreciate it, Robert. Thank you.